If you're a gamer, like me, you probably have something called a backlog. For those of you who don't know what a backlog is, basically gamers often buy many games that they don't even get around to play. Sometimes we only dabble in it for a few hours, other times we don't even get to touch them, whether they be physical games or something that we bought digitally. And that's the point of this show. And the first game we're going to be looking at is the first in a series that I love very much. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for the Sony PlayStation. Before we dive into the game though, let's start with a bit of history. Back in the 90s, skateboarding had broken into the mainstream as the IT thing to do, especially among kids, and the gaming industry wanted a piece of the pie. In 1998, Activision contracted the fledgling studio Neversoft to develop a game called Apocalypse, starring Bruce Willis, as well as a prototype for a skateboarding game. The plan for the game was to race against friends in a downhill course, and a skate park was added to the end so players would have something to do while they waited for their friend. When they realized that players finished the courses in about 20 seconds and just wanted to skate in the park at the end, however, Neversoft retooled the game around skating in a small but open environment, completing goals to earn points and progress to the next level. Early in development, Neversoft sent Tony Hawk a very early build of the game in order to convince him to put his name on the game and to endorse it. For those of you who don't know who Tony Hawk is, he's probably the most well-known skateboarder in the world. Why else would he have so many games with his name on them? Hawk agreed to be tied to the project, and Neversoft actually sent him a copy of the game every time a new build was produced so that he could critique it from the standpoint of an actual professional skater. The game was released in 1999 for the PlayStation to critical acclaim and sold nearly 10 million copies, with ports for the Nintendo 64 and the Dreamcast following in the year 2000. It was also released for the Game Boy Color and the N-Gage, but we don't like to talk about those versions. When I started playing these games, Underground 2 was the most recent installment, but I've gone as far back as Pro Skater 3, so... Compared to later installments, how does the first Pro Skater stack up? Well, let's see. There are three different game modes in the first Pro Skater. Career mode lets you go through all of the levels collecting tapes to advance to the next level. Two player mode is exactly what it says on the tin. And Free Skate just lets you roam around all the levels you've unlocked at your leisure. For this video though, I'm only going to be focusing on career mode. In career mode, you're given a choice of which professional skater you want to play as. I'm sticking with the Birdman himself, Tony Hawk. Huh, you can actually choose the trucks on your board? That's... something, right? I mean, they alter your turning stat, but... Ah, oh, screw it, let's just start already. I can't wait to play some good old-fashioned Tony Hawk- Oh. 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 This control is... it's just... clunky. Well, not clunky so much as it is... It's hard to explain when compared to later installments. It's not awful, it's not even that bad. No matter which trucks I use, turning around always seems to be a hassle, and whenever I fall off my board, it takes an ungodly amount of effort to get back into the groove of your combos. This is definitely a case where the games got better as they went along. Other than that, though, the gameplay is pretty solid, and the physics are pretty damn realistic. Which is a major accomplishment for a game on the PS1. The first level is called Warehouse, and like every level following it, you're given five goals to complete in less than two minutes. Collect the letters that spell skate, get two specific high scores, get the secret tape, and for the level-specific goal, you have to knock over some boxes. Riveting. When you complete a goal, you get a videotape. Get enough videotapes, and you unlock the next level. Simple enough. If you can't finish them all in two minutes, you don't have to. The goals you completed will stay completed even after you restart the level, as long as the session in which you complete a goal actually ends. Warehouse is a simple enough level. It's small, and it gets you used to the controls. I managed to finish all five goals within the time limit. Awesome. Next level is School, which is significantly bigger, but nothing crazy. I want to take this opportunity to compliment the soundtrack, not just of this game specifically, but of the Tony Hawk series as a whole. It's all licensed music, yes, but it's really fitting, and a lot of tracks from various games in this series really help to mold my tastes and preferences in music later in life. 
a mix of punk, alternative rock, and a bit of hip-hop and rap really do fit in these games. My favorite song from this game, though, definitely has to be Superman by Goldfinger. Cliché, I know, but that's honestly how I feel. Next is the mall, and this is where the goals start to get a bit more difficult. People often rattle on about the secret tape here, and yeah, it's a bitch to get at times, but on a replay of this, I actually managed to get it my first try. I guess I was just lucky. What I really have trouble with on this level, and most levels following this, are the second high score goals. Holy fuck do these get tedious. I restarted so many times to get the right combos so that I could get that high score, and the amount of times it ended up happening was unreal. I'm not even joking, just have a look at how many times I restarted just on this level. Just, ugh, next level. A skate park in Chicago, the first competition level. Just rack up as many points as you can, easy stuff. Downtown Minneapolis, more challenging. It's not too difficult, but definitely not easy. Most of your time is going to be spent exploring. Downhill jam, fuck downhill jam. For the life of me, I can't seem to complete any of the goals here. This is one of the levels that was made to be a racing sort of level, like the mall. So the places where you can just do combos to rack up points for the high score goals are limited. Burnside is another competition level, and a nice one at that. And San Francisco is just... bleh. This level is just so fucking barren. There's nothing in it really, there's barely anything, I can't really find my goals. This isn't even the last level. To get the last level, I have to unlock every single tape in all previous levels, but I can't do it. Make any joke you want about, oh, I suck, how dare I not go for the end game. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, this is the end game. The last level, the last level that you have to unlock, is a completionist bonus. And I'm not the completionist. Overall, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater isn't that bad. It's a pretty nice start to a pretty good series that unfortunately didn't end too well. But would I go back to it? I think that's the major question. Like I said, it's honestly not a bad game. It's just more rudimentary compared to its successors. But can I recommend this game for you? Yeah, I recommend it for anyone. It's dated, but it's not bad. Yeah, the control seems a bit too tight at times, and it's difficult to regain speed after you bail in a combo, but it's a really nice start to a really good franchise. If you've got a PlayStation 1, 2, or PlayStation 3, definitely pick it up. It's like 10 bucks. However, be warned that Pro Skater HD is not the same game. It's actually a remade Pro Skater 1 and 2 using the Unreal Engine, and apparently it doesn't work very well. Well, that's the end of our show, kids. Good night and happy gaming. Hey guys, thanks for watching the first episode of The Backlog. As much as I feel like a tool for saying this, if you like this video, give it a like. And if you want to be informed whenever the next episode comes around, hit that subscribe button. Also, I've opened up a straw poll so that you can decide what the next game on the show will be. Battlefield 3's Campaign, Sunset Overdrive, or Uncharted Drake's Fortune. So get those votes in and I'll see you guys next time.